Hello and welcome to another episode, Reseller Information Network. Joined as always with the rap star flipper, uh, Tim. <laughs> hey, with us, it's Cernop. It's connection, uh, guys. If you don't know his his true pronunciation is Chernock. Uh, <laughs> just all the guys on the panel call him Cernock, so we're actually gonna we're actually gonna leave it there. <laughs> The artist firmly known as Chernock that we call Cernock. And as always, we, we got Leroy. He's up there frozen. I think he got abducted by Transformers, but he's he's hanging out with us. So uh, we are going to jump into today's episode. Hey, today's episode, we're actually going to do something that's been semi-requested by some people in our panel. And I, I truly do believe it's probably one of the biggest hurdles when people begin reselling. Guys, we're not talking about, you know, promoted listings today. We're not talking about how to take pictures today. We're talking about when you sell something, how do you get it to your buyer? Shipping. How do you how do you set up your shipping? How do you ship? What do you use to ship? What are some questions or complications that arrive in shipping? So we're going to be covering that topic today. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to just uh, comment on some comments uh, that we got this past <laughs> week <laughs> and, uh, from from last week's episode. Uh, first off, we have Joe Deals in the house. That's great episode. I like that you continue to remind people to keep perspective of yourself and surroundings to help formulate best practices for you your goals, your expectations. I think the discussion helped illustrate perspective of bread and butter items. Picking environment is crucial. This also shows how long highway sales are so important to Tim, whereas Cernok doesn't need to go anywhere. If anything, <laughs> travel probably cuts into his normal profits. One bread that I typically, I like is typically a seasonal item, Irish soda bread. Uh, my mom would make it with raisins and braid it before baking. So awesome. Just real butter, no fake stuff. I actually had soda bread a couple weeks ago. Somebody actually brought some of that stuff to our church. I've never uh, had soda bread before. I've never yeah, even heard of it. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's not what you is think it, it is. Soda? But it's more like baking soda. It's kind of. Oh, okay. Not uh, like Dr. Pepper or something like that. Yeah, no, no. I have had that kind of stuff too, like orange soda bread kind of stuff. Yeah. Orange soda, soda bread sounds very good for breakfast. Yeah, it you know, like I've had people make it into kind of like a muffin thing. Deborah, so Deborah muffin. Murphy says homemade cinnamon raisin toast with butter from the local farmers market. There you yeah. go. Sounds good. Making profits 8546. Great topic. I saved your podcast months ago, and this is the first one I watch. I'll be watching more. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you so much. <laughs> Dan and Demand says, Leroy, I hope you didn't throw anything away that was good. That was from the previous episode. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ADH Dave, shout out, Dave. I, I hear that Dave's been on a little binge with us lately. Uh, I'm actually wearing my Trash to Cash hat today. Uh, so if you don't know their podcast, uh, Trash to Cash podcast, um, they'll talk. They'll they'll talk in their podcast how you should be watching our podcast. So you can. <laughs> <laughs> that. But uh, hey, and it, it's one of my favorites, guys. Sal's Macario, Macardo. <laughs> I've actually been working on the Duolingo. Thanks, Sal, for the comment. But Joe Daly, John Daly's <laughs> brother, is here with us. Bread and butter is regular, consistent sellers. We got it. Thank you for your comment. Thanks for watching. Trash Cat Rescue says, I'm not sure I'm understanding Tim's assignment correctly, but if I had a good week, it's pumpernickel and Kerrygold mixed with some fresh herbs. If it's everyday life, it's half loaf at Kroger with the word quarter piece of Bluebell in the fridge. Bluebell is a good bargain butter, man. You can yeah. get a good amount of Bluebell for a good price. Is Bluebell real butter or is it just like... Margarine. I, I think every butter is real butter unless it's margarine, right? Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It's one of those things. <laughs> That'd be an interesting question. Is there fake butter? 
I'm sure there's like everything else. Like you sellers out there, yeah. beware. Yeah, watch out for the imitation butter. Maybe maybe they have one that's coming over from Alibaba. You got to be careful of the label. Let's see. <laughs> I'm sure they're selling it on whatnot. <laughs> like, it's, it's, if there's imitation, it might be out Did there. you guys see they sent out an e uh, uh like new like email thing to everybody on whatnot and saying that they're really gonna take the scamming serious now on whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh evolves. Because I see a lot of I see a lot of scammers. For five hundred people in their live streams, yeah, I you know for me I've got a I've got a little mini rant like uh, on that, but uh, the bottom line, the condensed version of the mini rant is when you go on StockX and there's two sh of a type of shoe available, two of all sizes. There's only two, and some of say I've got size runs. From eight to twelve, you might be a faker. You yeah. might be selling imitation. <laughs> I was like, There's a pretty strong chance somebody yeah. is making that somewhere else that ain't Nike. <laughs> it's some of that Nike that I've run into in other places. Oh, dude, I saw I saw a jersey the other day at the thrift store. Man, so you the, guys the, the, try the stitching of the. <laughs> Michael Jordan looked like he had three legs. I don't know what was going on. You guys, you guys remember I had those shoes that one of them looked right and the other one like Jordan's one leg is like yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Like down below, like, down below the plastic. I was like, like, I, was like wait, I was like wait 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 turn those around for me. <laughs> I just yeah, it's funny. I had the one. I was like, "Man, that looks pretty good." Then I pulled the other one. Out. I was like, "Oh man, you're not even trying." <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah. Sidebar topics, guys. There are some things that are pretty obvious. Uh, be careful when buying products that are highly fake. There, especially if someone says, "I've got multiples of rare shoes." That's that's pretty good indicator that you are a liar. Um, so <laughs> we uh. We do thank you guys for just a little PSA there, public service announcement on buying fakes. Be careful. All right, guys, let's dive into today's topic. Let's talk about a little shipping. Okay, so for me, when I when I think of shipping, a first question I'm going to ask. So for you guys, when you first started, I, I know for me, shipping was intimidating to begin with. Honestly, it was one of those things like, okay, so what do I do? I just sold something. Uh, what does this look like? And then even making a listing, uh, there was some times early on that I kind of lost my shirt on a few items because I didn't really know what I was doing. And so so for you guys, let's talk a little bit about uh, when you first started, like what, what are some things you did with shipping that you kind of helped you get a little bit more comfortable with it? Well, let me say this. I'll, I'll start and I'll do like, instead of just like me I'll, I, and things that I did, I, I think it'd be better if I had told you some things that, you know, I wish I had known or wish I had done differently and stuff like that. Just like in the beginning stages, right? Before anything happens, you need to be thinking about shipping while you're sourcing. I think that that's the most underrated thing that nobody ever talks about. If, if you buy something and then you go home and you list it and then you sell it and then you have to get onto a Facebook group and ask somebody how to ship it, you failed, okay? You need to know how you're going to ship something before you even buy it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's it. Like, you got to start calculating. You got to start thinking ahead. Always think ahead. Reselling is chess, okay? So, like, and I've gotten a lot better at that. But, like, there's times where it's like, you're like, oh man, this you know, big mammoth spaghetti pasta making machine, and it sells for like five hundred dollars, you know. And you're like all excited, and then you get it home, and then you list it, and then you sell it, and you're like, how am I going to ship this spaghetti pasta machine? And then like now you're like scrambling for boxes, you messed up on the shipping, and it just now you're making no money, right? So it's like. Before you even buy something, it's 
shipping is something that you should be considering. You should be considering, you know, how much is this going to cost me to ship? Like, at what shipping supplies am I going to need in order to ship this? Because a lot of times I get stuck with box a box problem because I bought something that I don't carry that size of boxes for. So that's one of the biggest things. I think that should be your first initial thing. Before you even worry about actually shipping, think about shipping while you're sourcing. Uh, the next thing, obviously, was the, the label printer. Was it was a game changer? Label printer, pirate ship, those two things used. When I first started, I was writing labels. I was going to the post office. I was standing in line. They had to weigh it, and I had to pay for it. Okay, so pirate ship and and uh, label printer, your best friends in the entire world. Now I know a lot of people will use eBay shipping, and over time, eBay shipping has become more comparable to pirate ship. For me, I do everything in pirate ship. It's just a lot easier. It tracks all of my shipping expenses for an entire year. Um, you know, like it's just, and you can use UPS shipping discount rates on Pirate Ship as well, uh, which is a big game changer for Pirate Ship when they added that. Uh, so I think that's a couple of big things too. And I think I, I, I've i gotten really good about my shipping supply. So like, I know I need my big bubble wrap. I know I need my small bubble wrap. I know I need poly bags, two different size poly bags. Um, I know I need bubble mailers for all my cards and stuff like that. And anytime I sell jewelry, I ship those in bubble mailers. Um, the tape. Leroy got me into this. This stuff comes in clutch every once in a while. The saran wrap stuff. Uh, so that's another thing that's kind of important too. And just knowing your box sizes. And I think that that w is going to translate into some of the stuff we're going to talk about a little bit later as far as, you know, pricing and things like that. But like, I generally source knowing that I can ship this in this size box. So, like, I don't know. I know a lot of people probably carry different boxes. I carry – I just I just, I just, just got a whole bunch of boxes, too, and we'll talk about that in a little bit in a second. But 8 by 8 by 8s 10 by 8 by 6s 8 by 6 by 4s um, I just got back into using 8 by 6 by 6s And then the all the free UPS boxes, um, which – I'm a bad reseller because I don't know the names of the boxes by the numbers. And every time anybody talks about that, I'm so confused. Um, but the small flat, not small you flat. Like the 1095 versus the 1097 or the 1092. Yeah, are, you no, more of, like are you more of a big uh, number seven type box guy? I keep, I keep the large priority. I keep a small priority and then a shoe box priority. And then um, you got one, right? The uh the likes the rectangle ones. There's two different size rectangle ones. Three. Ten, uh, ten yeah. Ten There's three size five. rectangle ones. Yeah. yeah. Did they discontinue one or something? No, well, they had okay. they, the regional boxes that were like. Yeah, like, that's. Yeah. I'm so glad we don't have to hear people talk about that crap anymore. I never the use a damn box. regional. I never use a damn regional box in my entire life. Never. It's so stupid. You know, and I've saved I've saved five dollars before on regional boxes. Yeah, no. And and uh what's the other one too that I will use flat rate padded oh, envelopes and all that stuff? Like what is what is, what, is, what is this? Who do you, when was the last time you used a flat rated padded envelope? Uh last oh, week. Oh, those come in handy. Those come in handy. For last what? Week. Jeans. Jeans they come in handy. Yeah. yeah. Jeans going to the West Coast. Honestly, some shoes you can ship in padded flat rates. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that that's sort of like the beginning. Ask Leroy about it. Yeah. Well, Leroy, Leroy what, are you, what are your thoughts on flat, padded flat rate envelopes? I will say he uses them a ton for tools. Yeah. So, I mean, like, but me personally, and that, that that's why I said, like, this is me. Like, I know what I'm sourcing and how I'm shipping things. So, and you know, we'll we'll when we talk about how we price our shipping, it'll be you know we'll talk about that sort of stuff. But for me, I think that those are like the basic things right there. And then it's it really comes down to just the quality of packing. And I'll tell you, ninety five percent of the packing videos on YouTube stink. So be careful what you're watching for advice on on shipping. Because, like I said, there's a lot of really bad shipping videos on Tim's YouTube. Got a series coming soon on over the years, if you want to. Yeah, I got it. some good. I got some pretty good shipping ones too. But I think just 
you know, you learn over time and I'm always changing my shipping styles, you know, as far as, you know, techniques and stuff like that go. But I think the most important thing is, is to take care. Like, you know, like ship something the way that you would want something shipped to you. Okay. Like that's the most important thing because I hate it when I see resellers like complain like, oh my God, I got this and look how they racked it. And then like, dude, will you look how you're wrapping stuff. Don't, you know, don't throw stones at the glass house. That's what they say, right? If That's you live same. in a glass house, don't shit yeah. throw stones. No, don't yeah. throw don't throw stones ever. It's not a good idea. Throw rocks. Nothing good happens. I, yeah, don't throw, throw stones in the house. If if my kids are throwing stones in the house, I'm like, Yeah, yeah. that's problems. Yeah, yeah it's a problem. So like it's just take care, take pride in what you do. I know Cernock talks about this a lot too, when it just in, in reselling in general. Like if you notice, like we talk about that, like when it's photos and everything, take pride in what you do. Like you know what I'm saying? Don't be what everybody is stereotypes the resellers to be. Don't be those people. And like, listen, if you want to take some shortcuts here and there, I'm not going to knock you. I'm not going to knock nobody's hustle. Just do it at your own risk, and don't be a snitch either. I hate these reseller snitches. Don't be snitching on people. You know, just don't do anything stupid. Don't. Put a first class label or first class ground advantage label on a priority box. Okay, that's the only big no no, really. Well, you'll get hit. You hey, if that happens, our media mail, our media you, mail. You can send it, but you'll get hit with a with a with a charge after it's all. Yeah, set. and media mail is another stupid one too. It doesn't make any sense. I don't. Why do you need to use media mail? Is it that it's much media. cheaper? Now? It's not even that much cheaper now, and it takes twenty seven weeks to get there. You shouldn't be selling sell $2 heavy books, heavy books, books in $2 yeah. DVDs either for free shipping. Don't do that either. Don't listen to the people that tell you that that's a good idea because it's not. Stop selling $3 DVDs. Those guys are killing it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> One dollar at a time. <laughs> so that, that that's my – and that's another – the last, last right, beginning that's, is that's his don't beginning. do free shipping ever. Whatever – Anybody tells you, okay, uh, don't maybe, ever do free shipping. So thrown at you here in a minute. Unless you're selling a three hundred dollar <laughs> t-shirt, you can do free shipping. Unless okay? you're selling parts that are super light, then you have to. Yeah, free shipping is stupid too. Okay, that's it. That's my uh, beginning help. Tim's uh, right. erecting his glass house right now. No. All right. <laughs> so when I first started, when I first started the, the whole eBay e-commerce selling things online i'll tell you what i did have a problem with shipping I, I sold a bunch of my shoes uh my adidas collection and i remember people were and, and it's gonna sound funny now but i was charging i was charging 15 dollars for shipping i just did a straight up hey i'm just gonna do 15 dollars so when I did the fifteen dollars, uh, you know, I, I was I was getting people from saying everywhere, oh, this is too much, blah blah blah, yada yada. So they were they were just you know saying, you know, so but I stuck with that and I and I got I got it done. Um, but you know, it took time. It took time. The biggest things that I ran into was I had made those rookie mistakes listing something. That was that I didn't know, no clue about how much it weighed or how much it was shipped, and just said, "Oh well, yeah, I'll just put ten dollars shipping or twenty dollars shipping," and it comes out to like forty dollars shipping, and it's like, "Oh no," you know. So I've had that. So that's that's why, you know, if you are new, I always suggest to new people before you do anything, weigh your item, and then. Do a dimensional, you know, do a dimensional measurement, okay? Add a little bit of extra ounces for a box. Already go into it knowing what you're going to, what you know, what's how, how you're going to pack it and how you're going to weigh it because then you can just go calculate shipping. And then, you know, from there, the buyer will get charged, you know, you know, like so, so forth. Because I do flat right now because I've done it so many times. I know, you know, uh, a two pound or three pound pair of shoes go into the, you know, zone so, one, two, to, all the way to, 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 to zoom to zone eight. So those are the things that, uh, those are the things that I know 
to do now, but not when I first started. So like I said, if you're first starting, you may want to just to go to the calculated rate era to measure everything, to, to weigh everything, because that's going to save you before, before anything. Um, now, like I said, you know, now free shipping, listen, if I've got a, if I've got a thousand dollar item that I'm selling, I'm probably gonna put free shipping on it, you know, or if I, or, or I, I know Eric's gonna talk on it. If you're in a very, 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 uh, you know, combative category, you know, you, yeah, you're probably gonna have to do free shipping as well. So those are different things, you know, or if I do, if, if I do, uh, you know, I do shoes. If any of the shoes go to, you know, they're still paying the $15. I don't have to worry about that, but you know, that that's a good thing too to know if you're selling high end shoes that you will get a FedEx label instead of a you know a regular USPS label. So there's all kinds of things. That's that's the one thing about eBay, and I know a lot of people have you know issues coming from Poshmark to eBay is that that shipping. They just like oh I I just get so confused shipping. I wish eBay would implement something with pirate ship or something and say, Hey, we're just going to give you, a, you know, you're going to put it in and we're going to give you a label somehow. Kind of like how they do it on Poshmark, Rail, Depop. You just get a label and pop it on there. And I think that would, I think going that way would bring in a lot more sellers, you know, like new, newer sellers, if they had an ease of shipping, because I think that's the biggest thing you can get your, you can get your face ripped off if you don't do shipping the right way and you can and you can lose a lot of money so yeah. hopefully that helps with you know kind of going from beginner to you know kind of learning the way all right Leroy, Leroy! we got a couple of questions Leroy, Leroy, we, we, we had you here with us the whole time you Are see <laughs> <laughs> I made sure you were here, even though you weren't here, bud. <laughs> You're right. We got we got a couple of things. So what so are we we're talking, talking about? We were talking about beginning when you first started reselling. Like shipping, I know is a hurdle for a lot of folks. Um, and and then I did I did want you to defend yourself a little bit because Tim said there's no reason to use padded flat rate envelopes. <laughs> I was like, there's I know no Leroy. Reason. There's, yeah. Oh, Tim said there's no reason to use padded flat rate envelope. And I was like, Leroy's got stacks of those things that he uses. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, because they switched to advanced, I'm almost dropping a dollar fifty to a dollar fifty to eighty eight. Yeah, a dollar fifty to eighty cents a package. So. I haven't been using as many of them. I know I still use the actual envelope, but for some reason they fall into a plain envelope. I don't know how that works. Oh, I feel. You. Yeah, I feel. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we got you. So for you, Leroy, when you first started selling, was was shipping something that intimidated you, or was it something that you're like, man? It, it was tough because when I started, there was no label printers, so I wrote everything out. Yeah. Yeah, I had was to write all the labels out um, and go to the post office um, and do package by package. So you go to the post office with 10 packages, and they got to process all 10 packages. So, so back then, like, how would you price your shipping ahead of time? Um, it was hard. Um, you, you just sort of had to, I still had a scale and there was like, I, I forgot I had a website that had like a sliding scale in a sense. And oh, I was yes. able to use that and just have, and just have an idea. But I'll be honest with you. It was overpriced. You just, you have to over, overprice shipping. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that, yeah, that's it, was, something. it was tougher in the, in the beginning days. I, I got something else I want to say. I've I've been meaning to say it. This is makes me angry. So you know how on eBay, right? 
if you're listening to eBay, I think that this is something you should to should uh listen to. If I if if any of the three of these gentlemen would like to say a disclaimer, I, this is my well, there it is. <laughs> okay, so listen. You know how on eBay, right? It gives you the um on your feedback thing. Okay, this is the stupidest thing in the world to me. It's so stupid, it makes me angry. Okay, so feedback, you get accurate description, right? I got a 5.0. Shipping speed, I got a 5.0. Communication, I got a 5.0. But there's this thing there called reasonable shipping cost. The hell does that mean? What is reasonable? What? So now we're we're we're, the, we're we're taking into consideration what everybody else thinks is reasonable and unreasonable. How is somebody who doesn't ship every single day know what reasonable and unreasonable is? The buyer doesn't know what a reasonable shipping cost is. Just because it feels high to them doesn't mean that it's not reasonable. So my reasonable shipping cost grade is a four point seven. It just went down from a four point eight to a four point seven. I'm like. Can you just get rid of that? Like it makes no sense, zero sense. That should have that should be completely eliminated from my feedback, my detailed seller ratings. Okay, it's on the Thank East you. Coast flat rate guys. That's what it is. It's the East Coast flat rate guy that's saying tag on it. <laughs> I mean, listen, I give you. I I'm giving out bargains on shipping every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? The shipping cost, shipping changes. Every damn week, I feel like something changes with the cost of shipping. Do you know why? You, do you know why you get that? Why? You're not doing free shipping. Oh yeah, yeah. see, it's Idiot. Amazon. So, it's it's so, Amazon. So, so anything to them is unreasonable. If they had to pay for shipping, it's unreasonable. Even if it was a dollar, bro. You okay? know what? That's unreasonable. <laughs> I was like, hey, unreasonable. So thing, eBay, eBay, if you're listening. Offer them a Prime membership. That's what we need, a Prime membership. Then you can pay us for their shipping, and we'll, we'll take care I of it. I like that idea. Look at that. Yeah. See, I just come up with, so, with so, the angry, and then Eric comes in with the solution. I like it. Yeah. So my problem is I, my problem is I have all these flat-rated envelopes, and now that Ground Advantage is around, and Ground Advantage um, is a little bit cheaper, for some reason, my flat rate and padded envelopes, they fall inside of another envelope and and it blocks all the lettering. I don't know why it does that. I, I don't understand. I for some reason I I bought an envelope I bought an envelope that it would just the other ones just slide right in so I can <laughs> it, it, it's not purposely done. And if you're listening, if the post office is listening, it's not I don't. I don't know. It falls in. I, I put my label on the thing, and, it, and it, I, I don't understand what's going on. So if the post office you, is listening, you're listening, we 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 don't even know what he said, right? Wait, now. Is that is that USPS <laughs> bubble boy? Is that what that is? USPS bubble boy. Uh, Eric, can you throw? Up, yes, can you throw up the uh, disclaimer, please? Yeah, he yeah. did. Sir, not left. <laughs> he, he said he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm not involved." He don't want to face any federal charges over uh, an envelope. So, like hey, so for me, I'll talk. I'll talk just a little bit about my experience when I first started. I did not have a clue. I'll be honest. I lost money on shipping repeatedly um, because I didn't take into account. Like honestly, I'll be honest. When I very first started, I didn't have a scale, so I guesstimated. And I was way out on some stuff, like, you know, to where, and then I'll be honest, my second mistake was I listened to varying opinions on YouTube. Um, you know, the, when I first started reselling, there was no RIN when we first started reselling. And people would go to war over calculated versus free. I mean, go to war, dude. Like, you talk about, the Facebook groups and the stuff that you guys see now, right? Like people, I mean, I, it, it was almost as bad as Duke Carolina, like how I used to not talk to Duke fans, like for in the week of Carolina, like it got really bad. So, um, so for me, I tried both uh, free shipping. Uh, free shipping isn't free shipping, guys. 
like the guys that are doing free shipping, they're just adjusting their rate uh, up to uh, to cover their shipping costs. And if they're not doing that, they've got something else going on. Guys, when you go on and you see these items that are selling like media, like what they're talking about, um, and they're selling that for a super cheap price, those people that you see, like take a look at their store. Um, a lot of those guys are people that have their own shipping company that they're actually shipping those things differently, like than what we're shipping through eBay. Like, I mean, I've talked to guys that use other, you know, we, we talk about pirate ship. There's a ton of them. There's like Shippo. There's a bunch of these other things that they're shipping them like through mail procedures that don't have any tracking and all kinds of crazy stuff that you kind of want to just be aware. So free shipping that isn't free shipping will cost you um, if you're not pricing accordingly to cover your shipping. Uh, so that's one of the things that messed me up. Um, the calculated shipping by not having a scale, like Tim said, you know, a, a label printer, start with a scale and a measuring. Yeah, not to mention yeah. that, that's clutch. Because like, if you don't have a scale, like for me, I mean, when I pick up an item and I say, hey, this, I think this weighs eight ounces and now it weighs 12 ounces and I'm losing money. Like if yeah. it weighs 14 ounces, I'm losing money. Back in the day when I first started, not as far back as Leroy, like we were, uh, but when I, when I started, the difference with first class and priority was such a difference, you know, in the sense of, like you're talking about going from four to five dollars to seven to eight dollars. And I was like, man, you do that and you sell 10 items a day and you start you losing 30 bucks a day. Like that's pretty significant when you're when you're getting started. So just uh, for me, I, I would say be careful. Uh, you'll hear and even on this show, you're going to hear like Tim does fl absolute flat rate. Cernox going to a lot of his items are flat rate. Depends on what you sell, guys. Like everything else that we tell you, it depends on what you sell. Like if you're selling, I mean, I've got friends outside of us four um, who they're adamant about. They're going to do free shipping on every single item, and they do. I, I think a lot of people now are more adaptive in the sense of like flat rate, free shipping, calculated and a and kind of a mixture of all those that's where i'm at anyway is like i i have i have some auto parts that are like gaskets and things like that i mean they weigh nothing like two ounces and the whole market is free shipping so i'm not going to sell my gasket for two dollars and add six dollars shipping like i'm not going to do that i'm just going to price my gasket at seven or eight bucks like everybody else and do free shipping like that's that's what I do on those items. On other items, like larger items, I'm honestly going to do a, a version of calculated on some of them. Uh, now with Ground Advantage, you can drop that back and do some flat rate. But I've lost my shirt on that stuff going to across the country, to Puerto Rico, to other places. And you're like, man, because here's just a little thought process, too. Uh, how many of you guys have sold something to Puerto Rico and you, you realize that, Hey, you can't do certain shipping methods over there. Yeah. <laughs> or here's another caveat that's caught me before. Uh -huh. If you do flat rate shipping, right. And now you can't ship to a PO box. Yeah. Like, you're selling a golf club. Like now, yep. now you're screwed, right? <laughs> like now, like you have to ship it to a PO box. Not that you can't ship to a PO box. You can't ship it to a physical address. It's got to go post yeah. office. Now if you're using post. UPS, yeah. So Which now you have we to all do. Yeah, now you have to go USPS because it won't go to a physical address. I mean, there are some loopholes you can work on, but depending on the post office it's going to, it may come back. Um, that we've talked about that. Uh, sometimes you can actually put the physical address of the post office and add their box number and and get it UPS delivered. But Leroy had a, a jet just take off behind him. It, it's taking my packages to Puerto Rico. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listen. 
that's the funny the funny thing is I really am right outside of an airport. Yeah, that, I thought that, that's a real jet. Like I'm, yeah, that's what I, yeah, I, the, sounded, the airport is right. It sounded like it. No, the, the airport is right across the street from where I am. So, hey, you know what else? A small I, jet this is a little shipping mistake that I made recently. Is I had a guy that I met. I, honestly, I messed up on the dude shipping. I did mess up on the shipping uh, because he had ordered priority, but the item I sent an offer that really would have me taking a bath. And uh, so when I went to ship it, it was going to cost way more to do like priority. So I, I sent it ground. Do you know if you send something ground to Puerto Rico, they put it on a boat. They don't fly it yeah. in. So you have to wait for that boat, the container to fill up before they actually ship it. So like it yeah. may take yeah. three or four days. So this dude was hot. He was hot. So I ended up just refunding him the whole mess because I was like, dude, I, I changed it without his approval. <laughs> and, it, and, and he's like, it's something I needed. And now I've got to wait an extra week. So <laughs> I'm like, so those are some things uh, I would just say, be careful uh, when you're shipping and cover yourself. So ultimately cover yourself. But then as you learn more about what you're doing, just like Sarnock said, uh, my advice is always to start out, start out, take weights and measurements. Um, usually with measurements, I add a couple inches on either side um, just to make sure that you've got enough room to pack. And then uh, take wet weights and measurements. It's a little closer. eBay's a well, a little. It's actually a lot closer now than what it used to be. Um, because used to, it's like, dude, I could ship two things for what they're charging this guy to ship one. But also, there's other dangers when it comes to free shipping for me. Uh, free shipping for me is if I send an offer, that takes money away from my shipping money as well. Um, so that's something to think about if you're doing those kind of things. So can I bring real quick? Question. Go ahead. I'm sorry, ahead, Eric. Eric. And, and I will I will I will uh, tell you guys pay attention to your shipping. If you're new to shipping and you don't know like sizes and stuff, don't guesstimate the size because the post office will charge you or ebay will charge you and it's a little bit more than what you wanted to pay um and like play around with it like i've noticed sometimes like i'm 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 trying to pinch and cut boxes because the item is an eight by eight and i only want to put it in an eight by eight when a ten by ten is the same price so so just put the size a little higher and see if the price is different than the eight by eight you won't have to do that extra work. You just save time and you just save time, like going and making a small box or cutting it smaller. And the, and I always tell you guys this, when you're shipping bigger items, you're going to, you're going to go out, you're going to go home Depot, you're going to buy yourself a box, right? I use these containers that I find. They fell off the truck um, at uh, Facebook and it's the, uh, it's the totes, the plastic totes. And, when you you can ship something big in those, pad it good, and you know the extra five pounds goes to the buyer, and then you know it's going to get there safe if it's a big item, and you just save less, you save more money. The buyer, the buyer is the one who's going to pay the weight, not you. So if you know it's a five a five pound item, put seven pounds. You know if if you think, hey, you know what, I might have to put this in a a box that is is going to weigh three pounds, so. I didn't mean to cut Eric off, but I do got to head back, guys. Um, my call time is in about 15 minutes, so I got to get back up to the um, to the, the, the room there. Um, but uh, I'll talk to you guys all after. All right. Thanks, Sierra. All See right, ya. guys. So I've got a little rapid fire action coming. <laughs> so these these are these are some fast ones, just some shipping questions that that I've thought of um, right. while we're going because they're things that I've I've done. Uh, okay, first question: prepack your item or not prepack your item? Advantage, disadvantage. 
Ready? I never pre never pre pack. Never pre pack. Never have. I don't see. I mean, the advantage would be there, I guess, depending on the situation. Um, but I never pre pack because I never know what's gonna happen. I'm Murphy's Law. Whatever the word, what is it? What does Murphy's Law go? Whatever, whatever, can, uh, whatever, go yeah, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. So, yeah, no, no pre packaging for me. Say not now. There's some things I do pre pack shoe. I so shoes anytime I get a bunch of jeans, like you know, dead stock jeans that I'm selling. Um, so, some other things like jackets and stuff. I'll do it on occasion. I'll tell you this. There's a lot of work up front to do it. But, man, when you sell that item and you can just go grab it and pull it and slap a label on it, dude, there's no better feeling. Okay, I, 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 I bet. I just did it today with, you know, like like all my shoes. Okay, 90% of my shoes are inventoried that way. It, mm -hmm. it, it's the new stuff. That I gotta like, all right, get that inventory back again. You know, again, all that, all that twenty new listings piled up, and then I'll inventory it all. Um, but yeah, when your shoes are packed, it's so nice because I have them set up in columns. So I use the special skew. So I'll have like like ten to twelve stacked up in a column at any time. So what I do is I just put what column it is, column one through sixteen or whatever. I have. So when I sell that pair of shoes, or well, before I sell, before I, when I do it, when I inventory it, I'll put like, hey, column 12. So I just write a big 12 with a circle around it. And then I'll write what the shoe is Adidas, Ultra Boost. Uh, and I'll put like the certain number and lot size, number and size. So when I go sell it, it'll say column 12. Okay. Well, that means I go to column 12 and I'm looking for this now. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there it is. Pull it and ship it out. Um, I mean, it's it's a it's easy. It, it, like I said, it, there's there's stuff that's you have to do it up front. Yeah. But man, when you sell it, it's so, it's it, it's so much nicer just to pull it and grab it. Now, would I what I would I want to do it with everything? No, but I would do it for a lot more stuff if I could, mm -hmm. if I had the time constraints. So for me, I'll just tell you, I did borrow uh, Cernox method. I do it a little different than what he does. I put a custom skew on each box. I just write down the number. So it may be like AZ1 or, you know, like for Adidas, I always add A to the first letter and then I go A through Z for the second yeah. letter and then I do a number. And so for me, if I sell an item, now I will tell you this by prepacking those boxes, occasionally I've had to go cut one open to look at it. Like if there's something that I needed, like, you know, so occasionally somebody say, Hey, can you send me a close up of blah, blah, blah. So, you know, occasionally I've had to do that, but I would say 95% of the time I never have to touch them yeah. other than pop a label on them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just put that custom skew. I put it in the custom skew of my listing. And then I can just roll and I and I just stack them. Uh, I'm on. I'm not as wide as he is because I've seen his. Uh, I'm only about maybe five rows. So in those five rows, I can find all my shoes and just roll with it. So like yeah. I tend to put my A's, like all my Adidas in the column. All my you know that's that's how I do it. all my ends like you know and then variety of other stuff. So I've done that. I also do T-shirts. Um, when I when I do T-shirts, I go ahead and pack them and put them in a poly and then in a poly. Um, so and on the outside, I have a box that's like T-shirt box one, and then in that box, I've just got numbers and letters on those as well. Uh, sometimes I write the number and letter, and then I also write what it is, like he's saying. So like I just pack that Sting shirt uh, in a, in the bag on the outside. It says you know T seven, and it's got Sting on it. So now when I sell that Sting shirt, all I have to do is, and I literally just pop my label over top of what I wrote. Yep. So no one ever sees it. It's ready to roll. Like, you know, I, it's, I, I used to do that exact same thing where I, so, would, I would bag up the t-shirts and then what I would do is I would have a, box A through, I think I had A through yeah. G and I would just yeah. put A dash one, A dash two. And yeah. it would all be, you know, you couldn't see the shirt, but on the middle, I, I would write like, like you said, Sting NWO Sting shirt vintage or something like yeah. that. So, when, yeah. but if you look at the top of the box, 
you would just see all like the numbers. Yeah. So yeah. if you found the number, I would pull mine out. Oh, Make is this sense. it? Oh, staying in the yeah. show. Yep, that's it. And then whatever is up at the top, that can stay because yeah. who's going to really go, well, what's A27? You know, like the, yeah. no one's going to care. So you just slap that label on top of the front and, and off yeah. it goes. So yeah. that's that's what I've started doing. I have banker's boxes, so I can actually yeah. put them too wide like that. Um, but yeah, I've done, I, I've started doing that with those items just because it, like you said, it is easier. And to be honest, like putting it in the shed, like I have shoes that have been there for a while. And so now by pre-packing them, I don't have to go back and dust them all off and do all yeah. that kind of stuff in case they hang out for a while. So those items, but like other things I don't mess with like that, like electronics and parts and household and all that. I don't, I don't mess with that stuff. The only other thing that I thought of the other day that was something that if I ever did get into selling more glass, I actually thought about prepacking that to be honest to a degree, just so I don't have to worry about it getting broken on the shelves um, yeah. because I'm moving stuff around. That's something I thought about. I think, you know, like you said, it's a time saver on the, on the back end, on the front end, you know, you obviously have to put in some work and inevitably somebody does ask a question occasionally. But like I said, probably 95% of the time I ship them out with no questions. And then the other 5%, occasionally I just have to open the box and pull it out and, you know, do that. I do peek in my boxes before I, I ship them, just to be honest, because I've messed that up before too. Um, so I actually will cut the tape before I ship them and just peek in there and say, yep, that's what that is. I'll, I'll tell you for like some of the new resources that are like, oh, wow, that's the perfect time to do that is when you, don't feel like taking pictures. You don't feel like listing, but you yeah. feel like doing something, you know, like yeah. towards your business. Yeah. Cause you know, like sometimes you gotta, like for me, I've got to get in a zone, like to list. I've got to get zoned in. I got to get honed in. It's got to be right. It, you know, I'm not the one that I, I'm at my kid's baseball game listing. I can't do that. I have to yeah. be zoned in like, boom, here we go. Sitting on maybe some music on boom, 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 boom. boom. Okay. But you know, sometimes I just don't want to do that or not, you know, I don't want to, I'm not sourcing or I'm not, but I want to do something to just push the business forward. I'll definitely yeah. do that. Go downstairs and go, Hey, is there something I can pre-pack that, you know, that, all right, Hey, let, let, let's take these, let's take these. And, and it, it gets it organized for you where it's like, you don't have everything all over the place. All right. So I'm going to roll through these next few and let's just pretty much give a, a quick, whatever. <laughs> All right. The next one, paper versus bubble. What? Would you use paper to pack items or bubble wrap or both? He's what? Like, like, paper? Do you Boy, use paper or bubble wrap? Why would anybody use paper? Voice. If if something needs bubble wrap, <laughs> use bubble wrap. If it can break or it can get damaged in any way, you put bubble wrap on it. And you listen. I take my item, I wrap it in packing paper, then I wrap it in bubble wrap, then I put it in a box, and I surround. I put it in a nest with newspaper around that item so that the item is not touching the edges of the box. So it's the short not answer, rocket science. Oh, if you're, if it's so, oh. it's just, that's it. It's it's both, I guess. I mean, I don't know why anybody <laughs> would use just paper on something. I, hey, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. So bad, so bad, Zerdog. Paper I, or bubble? I, I use way more paper than bubble because I I usually use the paper as a void filler. You know what I'm saying? Or just kind of like you know, just to kind of like. Like say I have a pair of boots. Sometimes the boots are like more thinner, so you have a lot, you know, a lot of. The, so I'll just take some craft paper or some tissue paper, throw it in there to make it that. I'm not gonna waste the money. Like I think well, I'm not bubble craft wrapping paper. boots. You know what I'm saying? You know what like I'm saying? that. But you see, he asked bubble wrap or paper. I'm 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 using more paper. I'm not using bubble wrap in, instead of paper. I'm using more paper for. Well, yeah. Paper. Who uses so, bubble wrap to, as fill fill void? Whatever. The oh, yeah, there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah. Those people yeah. are stupid. Don't do or, that. Or they use just or they just use like bubble tr bubble trash, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't do that. Don't be one of those people. Please don't be one of those people. I use both. It depends on the item. 
Like, yeah. uh, I'll be honest. Like, I, I use both. Uh, there are sometimes with certain items I do use paper because they're not breakable. Um, they just need to not bounce around in the box. That's that's when I use the uh, the void field method. And and I'll be honest, like my little my little hack is uh, where we live is paper bags for groceries. I mean, I'm not talking about your chicken drippings in, in the bottom of a bag, yeah. but the clean paper bags I actually tear up for void field. This is the best for void. It's the absolute best for void is, is the newspaper. Absolute not, for clothing, best. not for clothing. Well, and not for boots. Why not? <laughs> eat, it's not thick enough. Well, I, I put my boots in a in a clear poly. <laughs> I put my sh I don't, people that would be listening. You don't get them to rattle around in the box. Like, no, I, listen. I put my boots in a clear plastic poly bag, right? Yeah. Or uh, or a non-clear one, like if they're, if they're really big. And I put them in a box, and then I use the newspaper so that they don't shake around. It's just, it's yeah. so simple. Like, people make things way more complicated than they need to be. And they're just wasting materials and mean. wasting time. Oh, dude. Too. <laughs> you don't have the newspaper? No, we, we ain't only got have no the newspapers city. out here. We don't live in the city, man. We ain't getting the newspapers for free. Yeah, we ain't getting. Yeah, I get the newspapers for free. Yeah, the people exactly. put them out for recycling. No, nah, we ain't got that around here, bro. Nah, no, nah, I see that. Out. We're out here in the country. All right, next. Resize your boxes or do not resize your boxes. I'll let Sir not go first. <laughs> Well, uh, here's the thing. I okay, yes, resize your box if it needs a fit, but don't. I, I see too much resizing going on where it's like they ain't got it's like, wait, 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 time out. You ain't got no nothing closer. It's like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mail this, this Pokemon charger. Uh, oh, hey, let me grab this. 18 by 18. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and yeah. no, yeah. listen, listen, I have multiple sizes. Now I will, now, now I will take a 1097 box. The, what it's, is it's a, that for the people that the don't biggest, know? It's the, it's a very big rectangle box okay. that you can make, get from USPS. There's a way to, you know, if you have a shoe box to basically mm. cut it, store it, and kind of change the size to fit that. I do that a lot of times because yeah. again, I'm going to be sitting at priority mail. I get a free priority mail box. All I got to do is score, score, cut, 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 boom, flip it out. And then it's, it's ready to go. Um, so you, you know, there, and there's a lot of videos online how to do that, but I'll do it like that. Or if I do have a little bit bigger box that I'm putting something in, sometimes I will, you know, cut it down to size. But it's rare. It's rare because I'm I'm usually picking up smaller items that'll fit in a in a box with a little void fill if I need it, you know, rather than cutting it. Because again, if I'm mailing this and I get, and all I got is a ten by eight by six hat box in it, eh, I might throw it in that, you know, throw it, you know, throw this in a little poly, throw some void fill in, throw it in there, and ship it. So, you know, but I I, I think a lot a lot of times people spend a lot of time trying to cut down you know, these boxes where it's like, how much stuff, is, how much cardboard are you wasting? So that's my short answer. Uh, the real question is, why are you resizing your box? Why do you resize a box? Because your item doesn't fit in it. That's, for me, the reason why I'm resizing a box is to send it for cheaper. You know, like, that's the main reason. The only time I really resize a box is if I'm shipping a plate and I take a, a USPS uh, large priority, 12 by 12 by 8, and I'll cut that down to a 12 by 12 by 5 if I'm, if I'm, if I'm shipping, like, a 10-inch plate. That's, like, that's the only reason why I would really cut things down. That's why I always keep multiple different size boxes and I have a, a whole cabinet full of like oblongong, what, oblong, what is it? Oblongong, yeah. Oblongong, 
uh, size boxes that are like, you know, the weird shaped boxes and stuff. <laughs> What's an obligon? Okay, so I do is that. that but is that an obelisk box? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, okay. not, not a square, not a rectangle, not like a normal size, like something that somebody else got from Amazon and I pick it up and I use that box. But like, the, 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 if you're resizing your boxes every time, like I was watching a video the other day and it's just like box resize, box resize. I'm like, damn, just order some different size boxes because you're spending, listen, time is money. You don't need to resize every single box. You're wasting time, which means you're wasting money. So like only resize your box if you absolutely have to. Otherwise, just have the other boxes ready. It just makes so much more sense. But that's literally the only box I resize is the 12 by 12 by 8 to ship, to ship plates. Or if, like, I'm doing, like, a, for me, when I do live sales, sometimes somebody buys, like, three or four items. So, like, I might have to resize a box, like, a big box to make it small so I don't get ch charged overages. Like, that's what I mean when I'm, like, talking about, like, for cost efficiency. For me, I uh, I do resize boxes occasionally. Uh, usually, it's for bigger items that are. Eric freeze. Oh, there you go. You know, like when I get the uh, did I freeze? Uh, when I get the uh, sometimes bigger stereo equipment when I actually ship it myself, um, like just like Tim said, dude. If you have a twenty by twenty by twenty, you're paying a whole lot more than it's a twenty by twelve by six. You know, like trying to. To figure out like how you can resize those things to make it more cost effective. Uh, occasionally, I've cut down boxes just to add a extra layer of protection, you know, so where like I can cut the box down and then fold, do the double fold, and then I'll actually shove an extra piece of cardboard in the bottom as well. Like I have done that before, but not and not every time. Uh, like you said, use void fill <laughs> if it's something where it doesn't change the price. Just stick some void fill in there. Uh, yes. Preferably paper bags you get for free. That's what I use. But you can also use newspaper if you live in the city and people will just throw it out for no reason. We uh, a <clears throat> couple a couple other quick ones and then we'll uh, get to wrapping this thing up. Uh, do you guys use thank you cards? Yes or no? No. I used I'm, to. I, I yeah. used to. I am about ready to start using stickers, though, because I, I feel like I'm not a real reseller because I don't have stickers. So I'm about to start using stickers depending on what platform I sell on um, and, you know, stuff like that, especially with, like, the the increased amount of YouTube that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? It's just, like, sort of, like, cross-promotion stuff. But QR code? Are you going to get a QR code on that? Yeah, I think I'm going to have a QR code. I, I'm, I'm still kind of working on some stuff here. But, but yeah, that, that'd be it. I, listen, and thank you. No turn, nice touch. I mean, if if you're doing selling like handmade goods and things like that, then yeah, maybe you know, like your own sort of stuff. But I mean, like once again, it's I, I don't know. I just feel like your time and your money could be spent in a better way. Yeah, for sure. Like my thank you note is the my package getting to your your house in one piece because I use proper shipping techniques. That's their thank you note. Gotcha. Your thank you note is a damn offer that I took. That was it's all the extra need for the use of them. It gives them to, it's something to read. Yeah. So they're not. Thank you. You said you used to, but not now. Yeah, I used to. I, I have some still. What I what I would uh, a lot of times what I would do is um, I would send them out like on smaller platforms like eBay, uh, uh, Depop, and Grail, maybe to get some you know repeat buyers. I. I don't know. It 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 was kind of like, yeah, it's cool, but it's like, eh. you know, as I've, I ran out of them, I was like, eh, I don't know. I've got packages that have the little thank you stickers that sometimes some of the shipping companies will add in with their boxes or poly bags. Like I, I've stuck some of them on them before, but, you know, I've seen people that actually write it on their box. Thank you. You know, so I don't know. I, I think it is. <laughs> Honestly, it's not something I think about a whole lot. I know that there are others that say they actually get. More. I will say, Brad, Black Sheep Society has really cool stamps that he uses. Yeah, that's actually a good idea, too. Like just stamping something on there. But, any rate, uh, last but not least, shipping hack. What What's one quick shipping hack that you would have for uh, somebody? 
to make shipping easier. Poly bags. A lot of people don't think about poly bags and, you know, you know, instead of a box, put in a poly bag. Yeah, for clothing, definitely a, a huge plus. Tim? Flat rate shipping. Use flat rate shipping. Don't use calculated shipping. Get you know, I know it's difficult for part-time resellers, but if you're a full-time reseller and you're shipping out anywhere between 20 and 40 packages a week, you should know how much an item costs to ship. And you should be able to use that and, and use flat rate shipping. Flat rate shipping, no calculated shipping, no free shipping. And don't be concerned about if you're using calculated shipping. Now this whole new eBay thing about the eBay calculated shipping being, you know, that should be your calling sign. You can opt out and still do calculated shipping like it's 1983, or you can give the times and be 2024 and use flat rate shipping. Okay. Join the flat rate shipping phenomenon. Okay. Leave the calculated shipping behind. Unless you're selling something that's like a damn, you know, anvil or a spaghetti pasta machine or a motor, you know, like, yeah, you can use calculated shipping. I, if it's going to cost more than $25 for me to ship it, then I'll use calculated shipping. Otherwise, 99% of the things I can get to ship to the other side of the country for under $20. And do you, you, know, exclude, do you exclude Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico? No. Have I you really do. It? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. On oh, bigger items, you can take a bath if you have to ship to one of those. <laughs> if you're not. And once again, to go all the way back to the beginning, think about yeah. that stuff before you pick up the pasta making machine. Yeah. Yeah. I I had a part that I, I took a bath on, but no way. Like it literally cost as much as mine. Just because your favorite YouTuber is buying a vacuum doesn't mean that you have to buy a vacuum, okay? Because yeah. not everybody is ready to ship a vacuum. Right, Tim? Yeah. You, might just keep it, you might just keep it in your car for like a year and a half. Exactly. And then donate it. Oh, I, I, you know, I, mean, I, I only tell you these things because I have experienced them. That is a real life story. I, I bought a vacuum. I said, you know what? Because I bought this vacuum because I was like, this is super vintage. Like it looks like it's a vintage, the perfect color, everything, right? I was like, man, I'm going to bring this jump back. I'm the dude, I got a good deal on it. I'm like, man, I'm going to make like $300 on this. That thing sat in my car. I brought it inside. It sat inside. And then I like, got to the point, I looked at it. I said, what in the hell am I doing? I'm not about ready to clean this thing. I'm not about ready to part it out. Like, it's just, it's more hassle than it is profit. Like, sometimes the profit is too good to be true. It looks good on paper. But man, the back end that you gotta go through to get that money, it ain't worth it. Okay. Yep. You, you gotta work smarter, not harder. I am doing this, I'm t preaching it because I'm doing it. I am cleaning house, I have changed the way I source, all of the above. Because sometimes you get blinded by the dollar sign. You don't see anything else but the dollar sign. You gotta you just take a step back. Calculate some things in your head. If you got to put it in your cart, put it in your bag, hold it while you calculate, that's fine. But just be, think. Think before you act, okay? <laughs> it's hard for a lot of people to think. I know that. But do your best, okay? Think for yourself. Do your own listings, too. Don't pay anybody to do your listings for you. That's Unless it. you're paying rap star flipper, then it's okay. <laughs> Uh, my shipping hack is become friends with your lo local shipping center. There you if go. You have oddball items. Uh, you can still print and use your own label from eBay. Uh, but a lot of times those guys will charge you a minimal amount to ship your oddball items. Uh, like I, for me, I've never paid over 20 bucks and it's items that would be well worth it. Probably take me 30 or 40 minutes to pack. So I, uh, yeah, I've I've shipped a nightwear before Christmas uh, lawn decoration that was metal, and those guys shipped it for fifteen bucks. I was like, that was money well spent because <laughs> it's uh, 
something that, A, I didn't have the box. By the time I paid for the box and all the material that had to go in it, I probably came out ahead. So that's my shipping hack. Get to know your local shipping center. And sometimes, honestly, I've ran into other folks that actually it's given me some sourcing opportunities, to be honest, because they see some of the stuff I'm bringing in. They're like, hey, you know, I got something. My granddad had this or, you know, so just that's my shipping hack. We almost but did not. Um, we're going to jump in to real quick and just thank you for our channel members. Uh, today's shipping show is definitely uh, brought to you by the fine folks at Reseller Information Network. <laughs> we want to thank our channel members, AZ Cat Sue. Simply Shenanigan Shanna, Diane Matthews, our very own Blood, Sweat, and Cell, Trash Cat Rescue, New England, Better Move, Joe Deals, Old School Picker, Hit Hit Sport Flip, Cherry's Terrific Wine, Kathleen the Fernway Flipper, Ohio Pickers, Annette and Frank, Rootly Retro, Absolute Fun. Dez Hardy, Heather, Heather, James, Steinbreaker, Old Pat, High Plains Flipper, Walter Tilton, Black Sheep Society, Death Pile Pitcher, Mark Rowland, Tracer James Training, Aaron Vaughn, Central Iowa Picker, Nine, Buck Mountain Barn, Pin Joe Picker and Trash to Cash Bugger. Hmm. Hey, we do appreciate everyone, each and every one of you guys for being with us today and joining us on the shipping show. So, uh, hey, if you do have any questions regarding shipping, we'll be happy to help you out with as best we can. You can find us at Instagram, uh, Reseller Information Network. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Facebook. Our Facebook group is the, the same name. And leave us a comment here at YouTube, and we will uh, try to cover that the best we can. You can also come by the one-stop shop, RIN.net, if you can go over there and check us out. Um, you can also communicate with us through that uh, through the app there. Uh, we do have where you could save $5 on your first purchase over there uh, at One Stop Shop. And if you're interested in becoming a seller, uh, come on through as well. Uh, we do try to offer all kinds of support over there. If you're interested in live selling, we would love to have you come and be a part of what we got going on at One Stop Shop. Sir not? Hey, hey, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully y'all got some information about shipping. And maybe some, maybe, maybe you had a question, maybe you had a, am I doing this right? Or, you know, Hey, if you, if you're, if you're doing the things we're talking about, Hey, continue on. Or if you're, if you want to make a little adjustments, go ahead and do that. So, uh, thanks to everybody. And, uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Well, I think we'll have the whole crew back on Tuesday. All right. Leroy says goodbye, everybody. Um, he appreciates you guys hanging out with us. Big shout out to each and every one of you lovely, wonderful people. Hopefully you guys learned, had some fun today. That's what it's all about. We're all about having fun and learning and helping each other. This is a community. Uh, I know I get a little crazy, but I only get crazy because I love you, okay? So it's crazy and love is what they call it. I think there's a saying there somewhere in the lines between the lines. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys head over to One Stop Shop. Make sure you guys drop some comments. We want some interaction. We want to talk to the people. We love you. And show up on Tuesday morning because it's going to be our, our, our uh, goodbye show as we're all getting ready to hit the road on a road trip, our annual RIN road trip. So let us know in the comment section below what type of behind the scenes footage you want me to film of us to put out on this channel. But most importantly, don't forget to tell friends to tell friends about RIN Reseller Information Network. Boo 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 boo